This is Ramon and the channel is up for. And today I'd like to talk to you about Julius Caesar versus Donald Trump. See, I have three major heroes, historical heroes in my life. Alexander the Great, Julius Caesar, and Malcolm X. Those are my own personal heroes. And where I'm, gonna, where I'm gonna talk about Julius Caesar here is gonna be from Suetonius, uh, the Civil War from Julius, by Julius Caesar, the conquest, the conquest of Gaul, and Plutarch. So that's what I'm basing my Julius Caesar off of. I realize there are probably modern interpretations that are more accurate or more politically acceptable or more I don't know. Nice. But that's not the Julius Caesar that the Romans knew. It's not the Julius Caesar that the Romans talked about. Julius Caesar was a man, was manipulative. He lied. He was a con man. He was a thief. Um, he stole. He was monstrous to those he conquered. But he's also a great hero. And he's not just a great hero to the Romans, he's a great hero to modern men. Uh, great leaders look to Julius Caesar to learn how to lead. Great men look to Julius Caesar to learn how to become a great man. I myself, when I hear the story about him weeping at the statue, at the feet of the statue of Alexander, get a little moved and think, I too want to be great one day. What am I doing with my life? So what about Trump? Trump owes money to creditors. He's gone into debt a million times. Oh, a bunch of times. Julius Caesar was known to go into debt in one area, then go to a different area, go into debt there to pay off his previous debt, and then move on to the next area. He was a debtor. He got thrown into prison for such debts. Okay. Well, Trump is a greedy, conquering businessman. Julius Caesar pacified the Gauls, pacified Iberia, went into Britain, and randomly attacked peaceful tribes. Okay. President Trump lies. He lies more than any president on record previous. Politicians by nature lie. This is not news. People lie to each other. This is not news. Julius Caesar was a great orator. He was great at the skill of rhetoric, which means he was great at the skill of lying. He was great at using his words to manipulate people to do what he wants. Well, that's what Trump's doing. Julius Caesar talked to the people. He didn't talk to the patricians. He didn't talk to the intellectuals. He didn't appeal to them, but he appealed to the plebeians. He appealed to those who considered themselves Latin, but were not. And he promised them citizenship. And I know what you're saying. Well, wait, 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 wait. There's a big difference, right? No. He had his immigrants. He had Gaul. And before Gaul, before the barbarians, there was the Carthaginians. Rome always had its outsiders who they wanted to get rid of. So... But then you say, but Trump looks to a strong man. He looks to Putin. Julius Caesar looked to Alexander the Great. True, separated by centuries, but he looked to another conqueror. Is Trump America's Julius Caesar? Well, if he is, that's a scary thought because the end of Julius Caesar was the end of the Republic and the beginning of an empire. 
So no, I do not think Trump's presidency ends with a Trump empire, with an American empire. I don't think that's happening. I do think that you can read Caesar, that you can read his biographies, his lives, you can read his way of thinking in his own words, and then look at Trump and say, Trump is a leader to the people who want a leader. Julius Caesar was a leader to those looking for a new kind of leader. And that's scary because that always means that the previous leadership, no matter how good, no matter how strong, was not serving those who it should have been. It was overlooking the ignorant, the poor. See, while Rome was expanding and taking in new communities, it was ignoring the underclass that lived within Rome itself. So you may conquer Sicily, you may conquer the Alps, you may conquer Iberia, you may conquer Carthage, you may even conquer Greece. But you're not serving the people who live in your cities. And Julius Caesar understood how to play to them. He gave them bread and circuses. He gave them lavish events and opened it to the public. No politician, no upper equestrian Roman would want to smell the mob. They just wouldn't want to do it. But Trump, Trump's a rich billionaire. But he goes and performs on the WWE. He goes and he talks to the poorest amongst us, to the least educated and least intellectually curious amongst us, and says, those people there, they're lying to you. And I know they're lying to you, because I've lied to you for years. But I won't lie to you. But I'll lie to them. And I'll lie to them for you. Those people, are taking away what is yours. I will give you everything you've ever wanted and more. I call it the Zach Morris effect. When I was, I don't know, I guess fourth grade, I ran for class president. And nobody got the joke. I don't know why. I guess other kids weren't allowed to watch Say by the Bell in that class at that age. But I watched it all the time. So I pulled a Zach Morris. I promised uh, pizza for lunch every day. I promised uh, 30 minutes free after class and no homework on Fridays. Of course I lost. I lost majorly. But when I was speaking, I didn't get any laughs. I was expecting laughter. I was expecting people to think it was the funniest thing ever because here's this thing I'm referencing that clearly won't happen. They took me seriously and they thought about it. The teacher had to calm them down and explain that everything I was saying couldn't happen. But when Trump was saying what he was saying to the American people, there was no teacher, there was no leader of the nation to step forward and go, oh no, everything he's saying can't actually happen. Instead, we had the fourth estate. And the media has become a failed estate, a failed institution. They've gone for sensationalism. They've gone for story. They've gone for ratings over facts and that has hurt them and it has hurt them so bad that even now that I want to support them and I want to help them you turn them on and they can't stop being entertainment they just can't stop doing it you want them to t say hard news and they just won't do it they got to go into opinion they got to do the equivalent of some guy in a room talking to YouTube and that's not what I want from the news that's what I want from YouTube. The media has failed. And the media of the day, in Julius Caesar's time, were the rhetoricians, standing out in a corner, telling their stories, telling the news of the day. There's a, a great scene in HBO's Rome where this actor, this great actor who I can't remember, but I know I've seen him in other movies, and he's doing these great hand gestures that all mean things. And it's beautiful. And he's selling the story, selling the propaganda of Caesar. 
See, that is what these books are. The Conquest of Gaul and the, and the Civil War. They are Julius Caesar's propaganda. That's what survives. Not the historical facts, but the propaganda that he put out to get himself to become consul of Rome, co-consul. That is what survives to this day that even we as modern people look at as history. Julius Caesar in a Gallic battle, riding in front of his men, calling out his men by name, getting to the front of the battle and fighting and leading the charge. That is pure propaganda. No proper general in history would fight at the front of his army because if he died, his men would scatter. But the propaganda survives. Trump's propaganda will survive his administration. So everybody out there hoping for his downfall, hoping that he gets impeached, understand that solves nothing because the hate will live on. It isn't Trump's hate that got him into office. It's the voters' hate that got him into office. Okay? You have to understand that the voters who voted it in, voted him in, it was their insecurities. It was their worries about Hillary Clinton. It was their concerns about immigrants, their concerns about people who spoke a language they can't understand. I live in a Hispanic community and I don't speak Spanish. Believe me, it is frustrating as heck to go to south, uh, south side of my city and try to order something, order a meal, uh, buy something. I rarely go downtown because everybody there speaks Spanish. And I don't. I speak English. So what do I do? I stay on the north side of town where I can shop and do things that I want. I am almost a, a well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call myself an elite, but in Roman times, I am doing better than most. I'm not starving, I'm doing well. So, that's going to have to be edited out. The point being, is Trump a modern Julius Caesar? Of course not. Of course not. Trump's presidency will last all four years. Me and, and a very good friend of mine have been trying to figure that out. Is he going to be impeached? Is he going to go to jail? No. He's going to survive all four years. Every Republican in the world, even those that were not even part of the American system, every conservative was trying, was hoping that Obama was going to be impeached. Obama was never impeached. Trump will not be impeached. Unless Trump truly does something illegal, unless he truly, truly messes up, that's not going to happen. It's going to suck for those of us who believe in a better way but he will be president for all four years. And if we don't start telling truths, if we don't get away from the sensationalism, he's gonna be president for eight years. The Democratic Party has failed you. I have been a Republican for most of my life. And because of Trump, that might have to change. But what party can I go to? I'm not an independent. I believe in guns. I believe in religion. Green Party? Mm -mm, I don't think so. And that's the problem. How do we fight hate? How do we fight ignorance? Because reading this is supposed to enlighten me, right? But this is propaganda. This isn't truth. This isn't fact. It's just a narrative. I want Trump to be a good president. I believe in America. But we have to, we have to speak truth to power. And power is now telling lies 
in the media is lost. They have nothing. They can't tell the truth. They don't know how to tell the truth. You say a bad word and they act shocked. You tell them somebody lied and they're saying, well, but he told the truth. He's, this is what he said on our interview. It's like they're a five-year-old who's never heard a lie before. Julius Caesar had strong rivals. Brutus. Sullus. Cicero. Pompey. We need a strong politician who can take what Trump can do and use it for good. Trump is no Caesar. Caesar was a great man. Caesar was a monster. Trump is not a monster. Trump is a flamboyant, boisterous, egotistical billionaire. He's not a general. He didn't conquer Gaul. He doesn't know how to fight. He's not a soldier. He's not an intelligence agent. He's not in any of these things. The left built up Obama to be the second coming, and the right made him a devil. He was neither. He was a very good man and a very good president. Trump is not a monster. Trump is not the end of the American democracy. Bill Maher is panicky for nothing. No. Trump's an asshole. And I'm an asshole. And pretty sure a lot of you watching are assholes too. That's not new. Trump is not a great man. Trump is a man. And we can vote him out of office in four years. But to do that, we need politicians to rise up who have the ability to speak to the people and not con them, not sell them, but speak to them. Peace, like, subscribe. Comment down below. Love. So the question remains. How does Trump compare to Julius Caesar? Well, Julius Caesar was both a great man and a monster. Trump is neither a monster nor a great man. Trump is boisterous, short-tempered, flamboyant, egotistical, but he's not a monster. He's an asshole. I'm an asshole. I'm sure a lot of you listening are assholes too. That's not a new thing. That's not so rare. He's a politician now which means we can vote him out of office. And what we need is a leader who can take a lesson from Caesar and talk to the people. We need a leader who will not lie to the people, who will not try to convince the people, but who will listen to the people and actually talk to them, not at them, but to them. Anyway, that's just my opinion. Please comment down below. Subscribe, like, let me know what you think. Peace.